Thank you very much, and uh, it's a pleasure to to have the opportunity to to leave France in such a context and to come to another very interesting uh, country I had already visited in the past, uh, but which happened to have another vote at the end of the month, uh, the referendum on the the fiscal, so-called fiscal compact and the European stability mechanism, meaning a vote directly in relation with uh, the, the theme of my address, which is European solidarity in the, in the Eurozone crisis. So in the Q&A session right after my speech, we may come back more in details into the, 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 the I mean, the current affairs, I would say. But in my, in my previous address, I would like to, to, to shed light on the way this um, European solidarity mechanism has been have been put in place, not only uh, in the eurozone during or facing the eurozone crisis, but also in the past. Because this uh, is also very enlightening for our debates. I will do it by mentioning the Jacques Delors triptych, but you, you've already done it. Uh, competition that stimulates cooperation that reinforces and solidarity that unites. I, it's important to mention this triptych because this triptych in Jacques Delors' mind shows, illustrates the fact that solidarity at the European level is not a given. It's something which needs to be built, progressively built, through um, interstate compromises, uh, packages of different kinds. It's more a given at the national level. There is a kind of sentimental dimension. We are all united as French or Irish. It's not the case at the European level. So it's even more important to try and identify how this European solidarity has been put in place. Um, and it's in interesting to, to, to do it in Ireland because Ireland in the past uh, and Ireland today uh, is, I think, a very good example of the way this European solidarity can be used positively for the benefits of the Irish people, but also for of Europe in, in general. So uh, I will do it. Um, I will tell about these, uh, these different issues by uh, taking some distance from the present actuality and mentioning first the way the European solidarity was established during, within the internal market and taking um, um, some references to the Irish case. And then after, I will come to the Eurozone crisis and a new European type of solidarity, which, had, which was not programmed, which was even excluded by the treaty, <coughs> but which was put in place under the pressure of the, of the events. And finally, my third point will focus on the, the next referendum, the issues of the referendum you will uh, have in Ireland at the end of the, of the month. So, for the first aspect, solidarity and the internal market, um, we have there a core principle of the internal market as uh, theorized by Jacques Delors in his triptych. But even before, a core principle, since the foundation of the common market, um, why is that? Because the internal market, the common market put in place by the Roma Treaty was to favor uh, this, the free movement of products and then of people, capital and services. So it was to favor uh, some countries and have more negative impact or less positive impact on some others. So in this light, we can already see the, the reason why the common agricultural policy was put in place. The common agricultural policy was put in place on the, base, on the basis of a deal between France and Germany but not only France, promoting the CAP, the Netherlands, we are also in favor of the CAP, and the deal with, was the internal market will favor the, the German industrial products. So in compensation, we may, we should find a way to restore the balance and then to promote the French and Dutch agricultural product. The very reason for the uh, creation of the CAP is this one. So more solidarity for the farmers because there is a competition which stimulates on the one side and which will stimulate, of course, not only German products, but mainly German products. On the other side, a kind of solidarity 
which will also sustain French farmers and then Irish farmers and many others. That is the first uh, step. There was another striking steps, including from Ireland in the 70s, which is one of the creation of the uh, regional policy. The regional policy was put in place because, um, here again for very pragmatic reason, the UK and Ireland plus Denmark were to become members of the common market. And they were not to receive a lot of uh, European money. They were to face an important uh, competition from the other members of the community. And then there, were, there was a crystallization at that time er, uh, around the idea of creating new tools, solidarity, benefiting to the territories lagging behind or to the countries a bit um, below the EU average in terms of GDP per inhabitant. And the very creation of the regional policy, which is a very important uh, solidarity policy of the EU, is this one. Again, in the framework of this single market uh, and common market um, competition uh, game. And so the ERDF was established in the 70s and uh, the dollar packages in the 80s and 90s um, give a, a very important boost to these kind of regional and structural policies, which are now the first, uh, the first element of the EU budget. So it's important to have this, this uh, genesis in mind because this illustrates why today the EU budget is mainly a budget promoting solidarity between uh, territories, between countries, um, and why this budget uh, could play uh, such an important role in the development of, uh, of many European, European countries. So, of course, if I take one second, or rather one minute, the example of, of Ireland, this role has been played because some countries, and Ireland is one of them, uh, took advantage of this European solidarity. They used this you, so European solidarity very well. Of course, Irish impressive development of the 70s, 80s, 90s is not only linked to this external head. It is first and foremost due to the efforts made by the Irish people, the Irish economy. Um, and we, so we can see if we compare with some other countries which benefited very, very massively from structural funds that they used them let, let's say, um, less well. Um, they, the impact was less impressive than in, than in Ireland. So competition that stimulates and solidarity that unites, this triptych, this diptych in this case, was uh, very well illustrated by the case, uh, by the case of, of, of Ireland, which is a success story in this European uh, first generation of solidarity um, um, mechanism. Um, to finish on this point, I will mention a last, less uh, known uh, statement by Jacques Delors. Uh, when the Irish people voted no uh, on a, at a referendum on the Lisbon Treaty, I think. And I didn't know him at that time, and he had said, well, I'm a bit disappointed by this vote it makes me think of a movie called Take the Cash and Run. <laughs> you need to understand what he had in mind when saying this. He had the impression that the EU solidarity had made, has made a lot, had made a lot for the Irish development, and that there was a kind of, well, uh, behavior vote, which is totally normal, democratic, of course, but which, which did not perceive quite uh, positively enough this EU added value. And what he had in mind, uh, in addition, was the corporate tax level of Ireland. I will come back on this during the question and answer sessions, but I wanted to make this uh, appear in, at this stage of, the, of, my, of my presentation. Uh, personally, I don't think that this corporate tax issue is that striking or that... Um, um, important, uh, economically speaking, but politically speaking, as you're probably all aware of, it is a part of the image of Ireland 
within the European Union, and it has been used and mentioned when dealing with the Eurozone crisis, because as you may remember, President Sarkozy, former President Sarkozy, used this uh, element of you know, so-called flat tax, low tax, 12.5% corporate tax, to ask the Irish authorities to raise such level if they wanted to have, in return, more solidarity from the EU. I don't think it was right to do this. I want to make this point clear, but it's just to illustrate the link made in many European mind between the EU solidarity on the, on, the, on the one hand, and on the other hand, this fiscal strategy, which is adapted to the Irish economy, but which is sometimes badly perceived. So this, this mention of Nicolas Sarkozy leads me to the second part of my presentation, the core of the presentation, which is the Eurozone crisis and the solidarity which has been put in place. Um, if we look at the Lisbon Treaty, one of the striking parts is that there have been new clauses of solidarity created to face natural catastrophe, to face terrorist attacks. Um, there is even a, an energy solidarity clause which has been inserted uh, after the crisis of the gas between Europe, Ukraine, and Russia. There are these three new clauses whose um, practical impact is sometimes not that obvious, but in the principle, you have this affirmation that the EU countries should be, should demonstrate solidarity when facing crisis. But these three crises, natural catastrophe, a terrorist attacks, um, energy problems are not uh, supposed to be um, created by the countries in question. They are victims, and all the EU countries could be victims of a terrorist attacks or, or natural catastrophe. My point is to say that there is no moral hazard there. There is no uh, moral responsibility which may be identified. And of course, the situation was extreme, extremely diverse when dealing with the Eurozone functioning. Because at the very beginning of the, uh, of the story, when the Eurozone was created, of course, this uh, uh, issue this, there was a, of solidarity was debated. But the solution found was very clear. The solution was that all EU countries, or all Eurozone countries, should behave properly, respecting the so-called Stability and Growth Pact, and that no bailout clause should be adopted. Because the adoption of a no bailout clause ex ante would inhibit the countries to make the appropriate efforts, because they would have known in advance that in case of problems, the EU would save them. So there was really the, it was not totally, uh, um, I mean, the, it was not totally uh, a new situation, the fact to have a crisis in the Eurozone, or the fact not to know what to do. In fact, the debate had taken place, and the final outcome was based on this, let's say, philosophical arbitration, saying we should not bail out the countries, we should not tell them that they will be bailed out, because that will put pressure on them to become more rigorous, to stay, or to become more rigorous and more stable. That was the theory. And then, then came the crisis of the Eurozone. Then came a very, very violent crisis, which finally led the European authorities to change minds, to change practices, to change minds. It's not that sure, but to change practices. Uh, because as you know, many solidarity mechanism have been put in place um, through bilateral means, at packages, and then rather multilateral meal, intergovernmental meal, means, sorry, the so-called European Stability Fund, and then now the European Stability Mechanism at the EU level to help uh, the countries st struggling and to help the countries uh, which can no longer have an access to the European market bonds, 
because the interest rates are mm. much too high. So this has been put in place, but it was totally new. And of course, in compensation, the EU authorities asked for even further structural efforts by the countries benefiting from these external aid. So you know this very well because Ireland benefited from um, uh, a net packages of uh, around 85 billion euros with a memorandum of understanding uh, for the three years period till 2012, 2013. And in, in compensation, Ireland made a lot of efforts. Uh, I want to stress this, you know them very well, but uh, we may be listened to a bit out of Ireland. Uh, it's important to stress, to underline the efforts made in Ireland for, for at least two reasons. The first one is that uh, there is an asymmetry in, a countries like, in countries like France, Germany, between the supposed high level of aid given to Ireland, Portugal, Greece, and other countries on the one side, and the, f the level of the efforts perceived from this country. To be clear, the cost of the aids are overestimated, and the cost, social, economic, political cost of the structural adjustment measures taken by Ireland and other countries are underestimated. So I want to say that it's very impressive to have seen such efforts made by the Irish uh, people in terms of wages reduction, in terms of job cuts, uh, in terms of um, restructuring the banking sector. Uh, we may come back on this during the Q&A session. Very important and massive effort. And I want to stress my point on this for another reason, which is that these efforts are about to create a, very, a more positive situation for Ireland. And this is also very interesting. Ireland is about, seen from France, seen from a bit far, but when compared with Greece, for example, but with Portugal, with Spain, is about to become a, a, a new success story in the last period. And we know that, of course, <coughs> this is said from far, we know that the unemployment rate in Ireland is very, very high. Uh, we know that the crisis is not over in Ireland and elsewhere. But it's striking to state that the situation is getting better, that the growth prospects uh, in Ireland are getting better, are positive, which is not the case in Greece, that there is a kind of stability, political stability in Ireland, and then that Ireland could become, though this is again uh, a success story uh, to illustrate so the positive impact of uh, European solidarity accompanied by many and very impressive domestic structural efforts. So I wanted to insist on this before addressing my third and last point, which is the vote to intervene at the end of May in Ireland. Because, of course, this vote takes place in a particular period for Ireland, kind of recovery period, and for Europe. Um, I could not really use the same term for Europe. I'd say that Europe is still in a, in a troubled period of uncertainty. So, this vote, of course, will play a role in the way Europe is looking at Ireland, but more generally at its situation um, uh, facing this uh, very impressive crisis we have gone through. Um, about the contents of the choice, you all know the so-called fiscal compact. Uh, you all know the European stability mechanism. It's the perfect illustration of the combination because between European solidarity and national responsibilities. The fact to vote on both issues, the fact to have the one and the other, or to have none of them, meaning to have 
the discipline linked to the um, fiscal compact and then the solidarity derived from the European stability mechanism. Um, maybe one, one word on the discipline. Um, we should not overestimate the impact of the fiscal compact uh, because as it has been said quite frequently, the older stability and growth pact has been reformed already through the six packs. Uh, and then I think the disciplines have been reinforced already. And the discipline will be reinforced and are reinforced because the six packs came into force some months ago. So the added value of the fiscal compact in this direction is not that huge and should not be overestimated. On the contrary, the added value of the European stability mechanism is important, is substantial, because we will have a European mechanism, a permanent European mechanism, which was difficult to predict four years ago. We will have it, and it will be used as an insurance mechanism in, in case of, of trouble, in case of domestic troubles, in case of systemic trouble. About the context, not the content, the context of the vote, I would add that, of course, there is an un a growing debate on the balance to establish, not between solidarity and responsibility, but between austerity and growth. Because true that we are in a situation where the growth prospects of the EU and of the Eurozone are quite low, sometimes negative, and of course this can play a role. And you probably saw that the French president has the intention to try and have a more balanced approach at the EU level in his conversation with uh, Angela Merkel this afternoon in Berlin uh, with the idea that too much discipline could create an austerity which could create, which could kill the growth prospects. Of course, he has a point in, in, in saying this. And we could see a kind of compromise, a European compromise, on the necessity to apply the stability pact or the fiscal compact on the one side to, res to, 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 to have solidarity mechanism in case of trouble and then to have some growth promoting measures. But I mean, to promote European growth through European means, will not preclude the member states to go on reforming what they have to reform. It, it, it is not an alternative. It will create an incentive from the EU level to ease the situation, but it does not create an alternative uh, as regards the necessity to implement structural reforms or to finish to implement structural reforms which had been uh, implemented uh, here in Ireland. So it's important to, 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 to state this. And second point, on the measures to be taken um, at the European level or in a European context, um, there are measures favoring the investment, which are supported by the French president. But of course, there are also another type of measures, we would say more liberal measures, uh, in the letter of the 12 signed by your Prime Minister, uh, these measures were mentioned. There are measures needed at the European level. We will have discussion on the internal market by the end of the year, and probably also uh, measures needed at the domestic level, according to the situation and the tradition of all EU countries, of course. My final point is to say that the choice made by the Irish um, uh, people uh, will be less dramatic than other choices made in the past, but is expected and will be perceived as a symbol from the, from the other countries of Europe. <coughs> it's less than dramatic because the island will not be able, a no vote will, will not block the process. A, a, a no French vote will not block the process either by the way. The fiscal compact will enter into force after 12 years on countries will have ratified it. 
12. Three of them did this already. It's not that difficult to reach the level of 12. So there is no leverage to renegotiate easily the fiscal compact. But I mean, it, 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 there will be more, less pressure on the Irish votes. That's the positive aspect of the situation. Um, if Ireland was to vote no, Ireland would still benefit of the current aid package of uh, 85 billion euros, provided the structural reforms are implemented. But Ireland would not benefit from the European Stability Mechanism, much bigger uh, mechanism, permanent mechanism, and then would probably lose um, the insurance aspect of this pact. It's not only a fiscal compact, it's also an insurance compact. Uh, and in an uncertain situation, would lose the possibility to have, in case of troubles, even if the success story is going on, but in case of systemic trouble, not only domestic trouble, the, f the possibility to, have, to benefit from this European uh, permanent solidarity mechanism, not only stability, but in reality, um, uh, solidarity mechanism. So, of course, this choice, is, this choice will not be dramatic, but it will be symbolic. Uh, and it will tell Europeans if Ireland is able to go on in the new path it had to, to follow right after the crisis, uh, restoring its confidence progressively, restoring its export capacity, restoring its growth, and then illustrating the positive virtues of this deal between European solidarity and national, uh, national uh, efforts. I would finish um, on um, um, an anecdote, a truthful anecdote, uh, on this expression of Jacques Delors, take the cash and run. Because in fact, I, I just realized that I mentioned two different types of run. Ireland run a marathon already between the 70s and the, the, eight, the 90s. It was a marathon uh, to reach a level of, of GDP per inhabitant much more superior to the EU average. This was the first marathon. And then the crisis happened, and Ireland has undertaken another marathon. President Barroso said, this is not a sprint huh, to recover from the crisis. This is a marathon. The Greeks should be and are running such a marathon, too. Um, I would say that Ireland could have a choice in going on running this marathon or choosing the other term of the alternative in Jack Delors' mind was take the cash and run. It was not a marathon. It was running away with the money already, already received and acting on its own. This is a, a very uh, symbolic choice. And uh, I remember another um, marathon, a literary one, uh, the one proposed by uh, Ulysses, James Joyce Ulysses. And I remember that the first word of the Ulysses is stately, stately, plump, stately, plump. <coughs> and the final one is yes. So <laughs> I wish you a yes at the end of May. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.